News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali. Hello, good evening and welcome to Newsline Live. Today is uh, one of those saddest Newsline Lives I've ever done and I hope I won't have to do it again ever in the future. Today, unfortunately, um, we had to come to terms with reality and uh, in the early hours of this morning I received a telephone call uh, confirming the worst. Bandula Jayasekra, our dear beloved friend, had passed away in his sleep with his brother holding his hand and Bandula took one last look at his uh, wonderful brother Rowena and with Rona clutching his hands, Bandula breathed his last. And he did so at uh, a wonderful place called the Palliative Care Center in Karapitiya, which is part of the Karapitiya Hospital in Gaul. And today, this program is dedicated to the wonderful memory of Bandula Jai Sekra, a true professional in every sense of the word. And uh, joining me today is uh, our senior producer and uh, a, a long-suffering producer of Newsline, Shehan Pranatunda. Very good evening, Shehan. Good evening, Paras. How's, uh, how's, uh, how has Bandula affected the newsroom? How did he impact on the newsroom? I remember, Faraz, uh, when I started working here um, about six or seven years ago, uh, every morning um, Mr. Jayasekara would walk in by around 5, 5.30 in the morning. Uh, and first thing he'd do is he'd go walk to uh, his table, he'd uh, read the newspapers, he'd br browse through all the, all the papers. Uh, and very quickly, after he's had a look at the papers, he'd go talk to all of the, uh, the staff, every single member, from the Sirasa desk, desk to the Shakti desk to the MTV desk and us, the SFM team. Uh, and uh, he'd talk to us, he'd share his wisdom, he'd ask us what's on the news, and he's always giving us ideas. He was never short of ideas. And that's, uh, that has been the hallmark of Mr. Jai Sekara's uh, time with us in my experience. Mm. And I know that as a team, we gained a lot of knowledge from him. He seemed to know everybody. Uh, he was never short of a contact, you know, Indeed. when it comes to the news. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that, that, that mark is, uh, is hard to ignore. Of course, uh, Bandra Jai Sekra uh, spent a lifetime in uh, the media in some shape or form. Um, he's worked uh, in all the uh, newspapers, including uh, the other paper that uh, our network uh, was so fond of, led by uh, the late Lasantha Vikramathunga, who's of course part of our organization as well. And um, Bandula um, had uh, many wonderful moments there as he did uh, almost every place he worked. Um, and uh, Bandula also came from a, a sort of a PR background. He, he knew about advertising and so on. And um, eventually, of course, Bandula uh, worked um, for uh, President Mahinda Rajapaksa as the presidential spokesperson. And um, it seemed odd uh, and an awkward uh, setting because, of course, Bandula uh, always called a spade a spade and uh, he, he did he represented uh, President Rajapaksa uh, admirably well mm. um, and of course uh, Bandula was uh, a no-nonsense person mm. uh, he, he didn't care for the niceties of uh, all sorts of deals or whatever uh, and like I said he, he called a spade a spade and um, he, he, said he spoke his mind he spoke his mind mm. and he was never shy to tell somebody if they were doing something wrong mm. or if he felt it could be done better mm. and uh, when he eventually uh, uh, joined uh, the capital Maharaj group mm. he, he told me actually he said that uh, uh, chairman has given him a second lease of life mm. and he uh, used to say that uh, to me and we would that was our private moment uh, and I'm saying that today because uh, uh, many conversations had its root in that statement mm -hmm. um, and of course uh, Bandula with his uh, vast experience you remember you know he was a diplomat 
and uh, and again that was that was odd uh, because Bandula uh, was uh, uh, like I said he called the spade a spade mm. and uh, but when he was sent as a diplomat to represent our interests in Canada mm. he uh, did absolutely admirably well mm. uh, we have to remember Shahan that uh, Canada was a um, uh, a tough as it comes backyard for Bandula, mm -hmm. especially with all the anti-government sentiment from the Sri Lankan diaspora resident there. And um, the Canadian authorities did a risk assessment and deemed him to be at grave risk. And so he had uh, the protection of the uh, Royal Canadian uh, Mounted Police, and, you know, the, the Canadian uh, Police Service and the Intelligence Services. And um, but never once did Mandela waver from representing Sri Lanka. And several years later, when Bandula was uh, diagnosed with this uh, rare form of blood cancer, uh, and uh, when uh, some of his friends got together and uh, started raising money to send him to Singapore, uh, I must tell you that uh, apart from Sri Lanka, overseas, the residents of Canada who had interact, uh, interacted with Bandula uh, donated in leaps and bounds. Um, talking about donations in Sri Lanka, we had donations uh, from his loyal fan base, I suppose, particular, mm -hmm. uh, even as little as 50 rupees. And Bandula was uh, most appreciative. And when it came to money, Bandula Jaya Sekra uh, ought to have been must have been the best auditor we never had mm -hmm. because he was, his commitment uh, to uh, being straight down and narrow was uh, amazing. Mm -hmm. And that's how he, um, um, that, that's the ethos that he brought with him to uh, News First. Um, and um, his, uh, perhaps we could uh, listen to um, a part of uh, uh, the last program he did with me here in this very studio, um, we called it, uh, he, he is the one who chose the name. Uh, and he, when it was suggested to him, he jumped at it because he said, one day at a time. Uh, he liked the song, you know, one day at a time, sweet Jesus. And he said it was very appropriate and he jumped at it and he said, yes, that's the name uh, for that program, one day at a time. And we, we discussed uh, how, it, how he felt when he first found out. Uh, perhaps we can go down memory lane and uh, our uh, assistant uh, producer today, uh, Ron Jasinger, will probably uh, get it all queued up. And uh, let's listen to that, uh, can we, Rowan, please? Man has landed on the moon. Man has done all sorts of things, but they haven't sorted out cancer. Uh, you've been diagnosed with a form of uh, blood cancer. Blood cancer, yes. And uh, what, what's it called? It was. It started as MDS, myelodysplasia. Now, we, now it has turned to leukemia, which, which is dangerous. Right. And I would say, uh, it's. I'm more or less. I'm. I'm terminally ill now because it can't be cured anymore. Right. And, uh, <coughs> but you, know, you, you are actually a victim. Uh, an indirect victim of COVID-19 um, because uh, when you uh, wh when were you diagnosed? Last year July, end of July, mm -hmm. I must also we need to educate the masses about the symptoms. The symptoms, yes. Be how, how did you find out? No, because for two months I had shortness of breath. I had, I couldn't, uh, I was feeling tired. I was losing my appetite. But I ignored it. I ignored it completely. But I was telling my friends and all, look, I have this. But one day, I must pay tribute to one of my classmates who is a viewer of my Patekada. Yes, the Patekada. The, Patekada the viewers. Uh, one of my classmates from New York, Viraj Yatavara, with all respect, I'll mention his name. He sent me a message saying that uh, you, you, are, you have shortness of breath. You are in denial. Why can't you go to a doctor? That really woke me up and then I mean I hope I have the liberty and with all respect I want to mention Shivan's name yeah. then I told this to Shivan Shivan said rush go to a doctor immediately he said the shortness of breath is no good 
So then only immediately the doctors found that I had MDS, which is a blood cancer. How did you feel when the doctor there, after having drilled into you and so on, and did, he, did their test, and when this doctor told you that this is, uh, there is no hope, that there's no point doing the uh, transplant, the bone marrow transplant, how did you feel at that time? Now, I must tell you, because you also know him, I have a godlike brother who is one year older, whom you also want to adopt. Indeed. Like Rona, Rona Jayasekar. Rona Jayasekar. He's one year old. He took lots of trouble and took me because I couldn't write, I couldn't even send an email. He came down from Melbourne, he spent time and he took me to Singapore. He was with me right through because I want to come to your question. Then this doctor spent two and a half hours time mainly explaining to him. I was listening. She drew charts, then she explained in detail that transplant can't be done. Let, why don't you enjoy the rest of your life? But trust me for us, when she explained, my brother looked at me, I felt relieved. I felt there was something I knew. Okay. You felt relieved? Yeah, I felt relieved. I, I, there was no fear in me. I knew that she said, you can't be cured that uh, I have to go for palliative care. It was given in writing, palliative care and then transfusions. So she said that you should not be hurt, not worth going through chemo. And also with respect to the Singapore doctors, I must say they reduced my medicine. They reduced, they reduced, re reduced it? Yeah, they reduced, they let me eat anything. So it helped me. Otherwise I was not in a position on 27th of October to speak like this. I feel much more lighter now. Mother, you've been a voracious reader, a prolific writer. Do you still do those things? No, I haven't written for a long time. I haven't been able to read for a long time. But uh, recently from uh, uh, November, now I told you before I went to Singapore, I was hunched up on bed like this. Yes. I, I, was, I was gone. Now last program I did, Pratikada was July 7th. After that, I haven't been able to do it. So I couldn't. But when I went to Singapore, the whole thing, I didn't, because they let me eat anything. So I got some energy. So now I'm into uh, meditative coloring. I color. Right. I was given books to color. I color books. Indeed. Then I, uh, I watch some TV now. Indeed. Those two I can do, but I, I want to write, but I don't want to go back to my past for us because right. it hurts. I don't look at my old photographs because the past is past, so I live in the present. How do you manage to cope? I mean, the difference between you and all of us is that you, you've got a, a shorter time span, whereas we don't know. It could be tomorrow, it could be whenever. But they've told you. How, how do you cope? Is it, do you, have you let go? How do you it's not easy, because I know it's, it's always sad to say goodbyes in life, right? It's like uh, you have a death sentence, but the same way, like lots of my friends have told me, same way, but you said for us that they might go before me, Indeed. right? There's few of them who have been encouraged, who has given me donations, left before me, which has been, I've been very heartbroken, but... Uh, it's not easy, so I feel you got to let go, but what else can you do? You have no choice. So I try to live each day. I want to be happy. I want to do little things. So my wants have been very less in life. I've led a very simple life, so it's easy to let go for us. And I have, I'll be honest with you, I have never been scared of death because you might laugh. I used to always tell my mother, I want to die at 40. She says, she say, you're crazy. I do that. <laughs> so, but she inculcated in us that nothing is permanent. She rubbed it on us from small days. I think that it helped me to face this. But you've come to terms with it. I come to terms, but uh, some say miracles would happen, but I, I never want to live for a long time. I do. People will laugh. But I, I, ne I was never greedy for life, even my first appeal for donations. 
I've said I ne I'm never greedy for life, but I like to live few more years. So I never had that greed. I never wanted to collect things. So it has helped. So when you want, can let go, it helps. I'm going to uh, miss your uh, friendship, your camaraderie, your experience, yeah. and uh, and uh, my only hope is that you might leave me your little black book. But uh, I don't have a black book or a blue book. I don't have. I have nothing, but I mean, I have said how, it. How do you want to be remembered? You may not believe what I'm saying. I like to be forgotten. Except my last will, I have said, I have made a request that I'm a romantic fool for us. So I've said, I want a bugler playing because I watched this movie from here to eternity. Mm -hmm. The famous movie where Montgomery Cliff plays the bugle. So I have said it. I want the bugler to play, but I don't want to. I think the sooner we are forgotten, it helps. Thank you very much for your uh, questions or, or your statements as it is today. And I'd like to read this before we go to the headlines and find out what is in store for at the prime time news. Uh, Bandula was a down to earth gentleman. I loved watching him on Sirius TV. He was a straight, true Sri Lankan. God bless him. Rest in peace, Bandana Jaya Sekra. And um, let's, um, let's go for a short break, find out what's in store uh, with the headlines and uh, the primetime news tonight. Uh, in the meantime, just also to let you know that uh, Bandana Jaya Sekra uh, remains uh, are at the air frame and uh, funeral parlor, parlor in uh, Kanata, and the funeral uh, will be tomorrow at uh, 3 p.m. at the old uh, cremation uh, center at Kanata. Uh, let's go for a short break. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali. Flying squadrons of the Air Force awarded with presidential colors. China approves a loan of 1.1 billion US dollars to Sri Lanka. Construction commences on 350 megawatt LNG combined cycle power plant. Final report of the Presidential Commission probing April attacks presented to the Amrapura Ramanya Samagiri Mahasanga Council today. Newsline with Welcome back to Newsline. I'm uh, Shehan Azunga, your regular host, Faraz Shahutali, is right here with me. Uh, and um, we're talking about uh, the late Mr. Bandul Jayasekara. Uh, Faraz, Mr. Jayasekara was a very passionate man, wasn't he? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, he, was, he, he was truly passionate. Mm -hmm. He knew the names of all the staff in all the buildings that we are here. Mm -hmm. And I used to say, the only thing you don't know, Bandula, you don't know the NIC numbers. And he said, really? You want to know? <laughs> and I, and didn't, I didn't push him, because he probably did. I don't know. But he, he didn't go, 
he, you know, he, yes, he was passionate. Uh, perhaps, um, let, let me just read out uh, a message that has just come through. Um, it's from uh, uh, the person who was the director of English News uh, mm -hmm. when we started Newsline. And that's, of course, uh, our dear friend, um, Shami Rasuddin. Bandula was an amazing critique who spoke his heart out. It was indeed a pleasure to work with him. Goodbye, Bandula, until our paths cross again. So long. Let's listen to how passionate Bandula Jarasekhar was in his journalistic endeavors. Uh, Rowan? Bandula, what, what does this all mean? If we have the troops, will they just be able to come and go willy-nilly as they like? Yes, no checks. They can bring telecommunication equipment. I think it's already happening. They don't. You can't check. You can't. Uh, you can't arrest them if they do anything wrong. A free thing. We should not. Why should we do that? Like, we are not at war with any country. We don't yeah. need this today. But if, am I right in saying that the Americans have been after some form of AXA since 2002? Yes, they, they will look after their interests yeah. because this is, a, this is the issue with China. But right? in, in 2002, that was a failed, it was an abortive bid. Abortive bid, and yeah. then I have heard, I don't know, even they have tried this with Maldives, and I'm told Maldives have said no to this. Right. But why should we become a playground for their battle against China? Ah, why that's what they, it yeah, is all about. Yeah, I'll just read because I brought this because I got, I was prepared for us because yeah. I'm doing this research as you know. See, what we are saying is it is important for Sri Lanka to consolidate all the important relationship with everybody. Right. Right. Now this so is... our non-aligned states. Yes, Indo-Pacific. See, see, because according to a former foreign secretary whom I spoke to, yeah. Sri Lanka is a much talked about location value of Sri Lanka. Right, so all these things now that you would have seen U.S. admirals talking about the strategic importance. This yeah. is what is happening. So Sri Lanka is all of a sudden uh, very much in demand. Yes, and let me also quote this uh, former foreign secretary. He didn't want his name mentioned. He says, "Sri Lanka's challenge is not to allow a military footprint right. and not get sucked into the looming strategic rivalry in the Indo-Pacific." Uh, what does <coughs> Citizen Jaisekra feel about it. We, we can't betray our country. You, we, this is our country. It's not owned by the politicians. We must, anything should be negotiated in the best interest of our country. And that was Bandhu Jaisekra talking about AXA and SOFA in a program uh, that we called Is uh, Sri Lanka's Sovereignty for Sale? And Citizen Jaisekra uh, disagreed. He said, this is country is not owned by the uh, politicians. Uh, in fact, I think on the radio program that followed, we made the point that uh, the politicians may be for sale, but Sri Lanka is not for sale. Uh, and uh, that was, I just played that to show you uh, what kind of passion Bandar Jayasekra had. And uh, here's another message from our uh, wonderful viewers. I have watched with interest many of the programs conducted by Bandula. He was a highly talented personality with inimitable style. His passing away is a great loss to the journalistic world. May he rest in peace. Um, the impact Mandela Jayasekhar had is absolutely immense. He, he used the opportunity that was given to him uh, to encourage um, uh, journalists from all over in various departments of this uh, group. We had people who uh, came and became co-hosts with him and so on. Um, and that was something quite novel. Uh, there's another message here that says that ba Bandula did a trek up to um, um, Adam Speak and uh, gave us an insight into that whole thing. Mm -hmm. And Bandula, to the end, he was uh, a fighter. He didn't just curl up and uh, wait for his time to come. Um, for us, you told me that Bandula is actually has a hand in this program, Newsline. Tell us the story. What? Absolutely. Um, uh, when I first joined here, we, we, uh, uh, we were in, seated in uh, our group director, Shavan Daniel's office, 
and Vanilla suggested that the two he wanted to do a show uh, with me and we were, it, was, uh, it was coming election time mm. and we had our own take on the different uh, politicians and so on mm. and it was Bundler's idea and um, eventually uh, there I was um, and of course uh, the other great creator of opportunity better known as the chairman of the Mar Capital Marriage Group uh, readily agreed mm. uh, he must have seen something uh, which uh, none of us can see he he's known for that <laughs> and um, uh, we ended up on a set and of course uh, I said to one lady, you know, we'll have to, you'll have to hold my hand because I don't know these things in this game. And he did. And uh, there was a light side because whenever the red light came on the camera that was pointing at me, uh, and um, I often uh, tended to forget the name of the guest, in the, we had a mind block. And so always I'd say, Bandler, uh, would you mind, could you introduce the guest? And one day he said, listen, uh, mate, you, you're going to have to up your ante. You, you're going to have to learn the guest's name. Write it down, do something, but you're going to say it. And so I, I said, yes, of course. You know, he's a senior man. So o off we went. And the next morning, um, I was practicing and practicing. And then the camera lights come on, and they go, block again. So I said, Banda, I know what we spoke about, but would you mind? Can you introduce the guest? And he said, uh, actually, Faraz, it's your turn. And uh, I was put in the hot spot, and of course, I turned it all around, and I said, on Newsline, we do things differently uh, sometimes. And of course, uh, uh, the guest introduced himself. And, but that was Banda teaching me uh, to stand on my own feet. Um, Banda was really very, very, very passionate. And um, um, I want to uh, uh, play this last clip from uh, a program that uh, I enjoyed immensely. And it was a phenomenal success because uh, One Day at a Time with Bandar Jai Sekra uh, attracted intense attention uh, from all over the world. We had uh, people commenting on Bandula's openness, his candid discussion on his impending demise. Let's listen to uh, the last bit of the clip from One Day at a Time with Bandula Jai Sekra. And Bandula, as we come to the end of this uh, program, because it's time for the uh, prime time news from News First, I have this mega urge to envelope you in a big bear hug, but COVID pre prevents me from doing that. Um, but you have my big hug. Um, you've been marvelous. You've been a wonderful uh, friend, and uh, the network you've made such a contribution. You may say it's not sad, but believe me, it's absolutely sad. It really is. But thank you for being on Newsline. Thank you for having me. Bandar Jasekra, he suffered his pain as only he could with dignity and with decorum. Um, One Day at a Time was a fabulously well received program, and uh, he spoke candidly about his impending demise. Uh, I, for one, will miss his leg pulling his uh, wise words and uh, basically his camaraderie. Thank you all for making Bandula's passing so peaceful and so comfortable, especially to all those uh, medical staff at Karapitiya and at the KDU and in Singapore uh, for the care that, he, uh, that they had for Bandula. Um, Bandula was a broadcaster, journalist, diplomat, and personally a great friend, and a wonderful friend from the board of directors all the way down to everybody in our group, and especially at uh, Team News First. We shall all miss him immensely, of course. But above all, Bandula Jai Sekra was a true patriot. He was, as the young ones will say, a patta Sri Lankika Pora. God bless you, Bandula Jai Sekra, a friend 
of the Capital Maharaja group. He was proud to be part of the Capital Maharaja group. Thank you. God bless you. Until we meet again. So long. Bandula Jai Sekra. Thank you. Thank you, Faraz.